They had one thing where we did Indian charges in camp, and Henry had the whole place of sand, as big as his room, so you didn't have to look for a spot. You could come in and just go when you go. Well, they had about 15 or 20 dummy Indians where they're supposed to have been dead on there, and uh, Bill Claxton says, they don't look good. They get a painter out there and spray it down in there. Well, a couple of them Indians got there to drunk, and he sprayed him and he jumped. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? And then we get a back up there and out to you. But we did have a few that would uh, have a little libation now. And <laughs> <laughs> so I want to ask you one thing. Right back there is a stunt girl with all her Jackie, stand up. Yeah. <laughs> You were talking about horses, and as a horse girl who grew up watching High Chaparral and always watching the horses, could always tell when a horse was changed from scene to scene. You know, a horse that had its blaze painted over. And, I mean, this is what horse girls do. Yep. Fast forward, I grew up, I became a veterinarian, and it's my job to keep horses sound. So this question is for Jack Lilly. I am so impressed with the horses and the soundness that I see. So I can't help but watch a western and watch and see if the horse is off. And like, you see that so many times in some of these westerns. Sometimes they're off in the back end. Sometimes they've got the white spots on them from the saddles that didn't fit and such. And that's just, you know, comes with the territory. But I have not seen a western as consistent as the high chaparral for horses being sound when they were used over and over and over and over again. And this day and age, I'm keeping horses sound with alternative therapies, chiropractic, acupressure, um, cold laser therapy. And these horses aren't doing a fraction of the work that your horses did. So my question is, what did you do to keep them sound and, and in such good shape during all that filming? Um, uh, the horses? As many chases as we did with the horses, they were like a racehorse. They were in shape. And uh, every uh, guy that worked, even after I'd gone, they knew when a horse was uh, uh, blowing, blowing. They'd say, hold, hold him up, boy. Let's give him a break. Yeah, and with, with a break, and, and between any runs, uh, Bill Claxton, great director, Kent, and then say, hey, Boys, okay, and you just go out and give them and let them get their breath, and, and then we take off and go again. Because this bird did a lot of his own chases, yeah. and, yeah. and he's just trying to get a little extra money. But there we go. We also had uh, a double for a horse, and if we had a big, big chase sequence, you know, horses would get out there. Now they got a this is that ball, big rest of. We would put the double horse in for take two, so that we didn't have any lost time. So that uh, it's a lot of work for horses. That, uh, they, they, we, we didn't have too much trouble. Also, in the uh, in the '60s, I think it was, uh, we had to have humane society on set anytime we were using horses.
got a little sore and they, they'd take them out of the thing. I was supposed to be leading the pack of those same Indians went and got into the cavalry uniforms. They we chased ourselves. <laughs> And the uh, boy had to, had to have all of you there. Had to be there. I mean, I'm sure Don was there. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. We the, uh, were always sober. <laughs> well, we had, uh, Rare day. We were, we were riding, we were riding really hard across the desert out there, jumping ditches, jumping bushes. Uh, Phil, was it Phil Rollins that was the director on that? Yeah, it was. Phil Rollins. And he. Gun, gun, rock and roll. Yep. Lucky to. I'm also a roper and I rope with him, rodeo with him yeah. years after that, but that's where I met him. And the, uh, he met me earlier in the day. He says, uh, You know, Jay, you're, you're going to come out of that saddle. With the, I had to ride the officer saddles. And no, not the uh, This gun's small. It's, it's a little flat piece of leather that sticks on the back and a couple of floppy stirrups. He says, you're going to come out of that before the day is over. He knew we were going to do a lot of rough riding. And uh, so we started betting. First, we started betting. I forget whether it was we bet dinner first. And there was too many dinners. We were getting ready to go home. Uh, then he changed it to drinks. And we bet on every run. I didn't come out. I didn't come out. We changed horses. I know I changed horses three times uh, because I was supposed to be leading the charge. And, Everybody was passing it. You know, we could switch horses with him, give him a faster horse. And, uh, we had a lot of fun. I, I made one real bad mistake that day that I'll never forget. I mean, it wasn't terrible, but I started the runs with bare hands instead of my cavalry gloves. So I was, couldn't put them on during. But we, like I said, we were in the saddle 10, 12 hours that day. And my uh, fingers had gone to blisters and then gone to blood and everything, just, just hanging on to these horses. Uh, but we got close to the end of the day, and the bugler and I are supposed to ride up in front of all these guys, ride up to the chaparral boys, and uh, rein in. They keep going by. come in there and said, boy, I'm going to make this look really good. And I was all in. I set that horse up, pulled back on him, and I, uh, I really wanted him to sit down and slide. Mm -hmm. Instead, he, these, by the way, these were local horses. We had, they were leased, uh, weren't they, Jack? Weren't they leased? Uh, well, uh, they were supplemented uh, from Vernon Mouth or the Denny Allen. Mostly the cat horse named Denny Allen. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know what I ended up on, but he, uh, he was a pretty thing. He was a big black horse, and, but he comes riding in there, and I'm ready to sit back and, and slide him in there, and he comes up off the front end, and he spins, <laughs> spins does, comes completely around 360, and I'm hanging out of the saddle. <laughs> I, a, I believe I had a, a pistol in one hand, and I'm just about to go to the ground, and all I could think about was my bet with <laughs> So he's laughing, and he, uh, we've got, 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 there was a, a lot of dust. And uh, he came up and said, I, I think we can make you look a little bit better than that. You know, let's do it again. <laughs> so I'm in there now, and I'm expecting this horse to do this. But, well, he came up, but he didn't turn this time. This time he threw his head straight back into my face. Oh, oh. Knocked me right out of the side. Oh. Onto the ground. And all. I'm really upset because now I owe. But there was a clip which I what managed to get, so I still have to this day, of uh, showing the dust and the guys riding by and everything. And I, I had disappeared. And you see me running as hard as I can run, hoping I'm not going to get run over on the TV. Out of the shot, just as hard as I can run. But, uh, it was, it was a great time. Really. Uh, uh, you talked about the, the uh, just a bit. You talk, talking about, uh, it almost looks phony, but if you're going to do a falling horse, and the ground is thick, and then they had this whole patch of sand. You, you knew it was going to be a falling horse. So what Bill Claxton and I got talking about 
We wouldn't like that. So the whole yard in front of the chaparral, all the area down there, I had a commit, had a crew commit and rake everything. They worked two days raking all the rocks and all the stuff out of it. And then I had to come in and put down a very fine granite so that we never had to put up, make a patch, not phony. It was always they could do what they want. So it, uh, it was also good for the horses as well. But uh, uh, did you speak about Denny Allen? Uh, he was supposed to be here this week, but uh, he's not too well. And, uh, he was the finest head wrangler I've ever known. And I've worked with a few good ones, but he was the best. Yeah. And he cared about his horses. He cared about who was riding, was the stirrups right, was this right. He was uh, on top of everything. And uh, we used to bring over two truckloads of horses from LA, and then uh, we used a lot of horses, local horses. And if you look at the Buffalo Soldiers, we had 80 head of horses in the one shot. And believe me, it was a lot of work to put it together. But it was good. Yes, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no I just had one follow-up comment. And also, as a member of the Association of Avian Veterinarians, I want to thank you for saving the turkey. Let me tell you one of those guy there, he only weighed about 90 pounds. And stand up, Neil. Uh -huh. <laughs> Steve DeFrance was in it. He brought it back to my memory. We were doing Indians, and they were calling you and this bunch were chasing us. And oh, we come yeah. around the corner, and he had a 30 30, and it got over this horse duck, and he hit one in Sora. And I went <laughs> over him, and he looked like a fish out of water. Yeah. <laughs> so we picked that rifle up and put about a four inch plug in it to come out of that cactus. That's how hard he hit. <laughs> The little rat didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> Would have killed an ordinary man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Henry Wills was very, very uh, worried about horses. He worried about the stuff people. And we used to work out at a place called White Staddy Ranch, where I'm sure a lot of you have been to. And Henry Wills and myself and the crew, we went out on Sunday. And we took all the bad cactus, they had the chumpy cactus. And if you got near it, it's going to get you. We cut all that out of there for like a half mile down the road so that we could put a camera car and shoot it off the side. We never had to worry about a horse getting hurt or worry about anybody in the saddle getting hurt. So we were always very protective. I remember you getting some. Some free stunts on that that one run that I did. Because yeah. if, you, if you look at it and you look behind the lead horse, you see guys going off all over the place, and they, <laughs> they weren't getting shot. <laughs> Hi, this is question is for Ray. You you did so much that most people watching wouldn't know how hard you worked uh, with the cast and the crew. You told us a story years ago, a wonderful story, the one the pilot. And I'd like you to share that, if you will, about building the landing platform off the ranch house for Bobby Boy's stuff. Remember that story? Who are you talking to? Right away. Oh, right away. Right. Right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One biggest problem I don't hear with a who. Very <laughs> <laughs> good company. Did you build the platform? The oh yeah. That, you know, well, well, I was I was just helping yeah, the, uh, the carpenters and the special effects men that were putting up this platform for uh, Bobby to do a high fall off the ranch house, and uh, we. It was about 120 that day, and we get out there, we get it all bit, get built. Bobby says, "Well, I got to go up top, take a look at it." It goes up. She says, "Sorry, guys, we got to move it about four feet over this way and three feet out." And I didn't know Bobby at that 
time. That was that was our club. We were doing the uh, pilot, and uh, so we okay <laughs> tore it all down, moved it over, got it done, and we went up to just right. And uh, I get into the uh, hotel that night. There's a quart of whiskey in it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, and that right there is what Kent McCray said. If he wouldn't have cleaned these places where we made these charges, these Indians, uh, Burning Mouth was a sub letter of Slav stock. Well, you don't know what you was going to get on. I can go on some stories that you know, you took your breath away. But, he brought them all, he had gift this, well, uh, I can't, can't remember that Johnny's name, but we come around where they said safety-wise, he said, this horse broke and run and draped this guy over one of them, oak, uh, not over here, what's a little bad cactus? Troy. 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 This poor guy was an Indian, and his, his horse sucked back and laid him into a man. <laughs> Man, I, they were a terrible thing. So I'll tell you, this man did make me look for safety. If, if that had ever happened to me, I think I would have died right there. I think you said, well, he's only an Indian to the hell of it. <laughs> I got to step in a minute. Ray DeWay, who was sitting over here, he was our craft service. Now, Ray DeWay, craft service, and they don't have a one particular job. Well, he had a particular job, picking up cigarette butts. But uh, <laughs> right away, all this world, as if the church, <laughs> if, if one department needed some help, he'd step in and help them. It was always there to help. You know, they got a four-bay grip crew and all, or nine electricians. If they needed help, he was right there. He was always on the set. And, uh, he uh, also had the coffee for us in the morning. And, uh, he, he can't, you can't say enough about Ray DeWay because he knew what he was doing and he was there to help people and that's what he did. Somebody who helped the craft, so that's why they call craft service. Today on the set, television features craft service is a truck. It's like a caterer. It sits there and they have food all day long and drinks and all that. Stuff. Yeah. They call it craft service, and that came out of the uh, non-union show, yeah. where they used to feed it all the time, and those producers then became producers in the mainstream. And they said, well, where's craft service? Well, that's Ray right over there. No, no, no. The food. What are you talking about? We don't have that. Hmm. Basically, that's Yeah, the I, uh, after the third year of uh, High Shack Well, I got out of the studio. <laughs> and uh, yeah. uh, not because of High Shack Well, it was just the, the, uh, <coughs> the business itself. I wouldn't be here today if I'd have stayed there. In, in, no, in the business. no way I'd have just tore it out. Nothing left of me but at the end of the season. And, uh, so I've been, I didn't miss the business, I missed the people. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Chaparral was a unique show, by the way. Yeah, well, it, it, extended family. We, we had a, a, a great crew, uh, a good chair of us had worked many pictures together. Uh, part of the crew was, was a lot of other pictures and things like that. So I got to know a lot of the dogs. We, uh, I even worked with Don Collier and uh, he don't remember. 
So what Glenn did for the phone. Painted green. You know, uh, but I told you about, I think the video the story about uh, the pilot, we were getting a reflection. And we some of the locals figured out that uh, Ryan Air Force Field, which was down the road a couple of miles, we were getting stuff off the roof of the reflection. So I got the sheriff, we had a sheriff always on the set. And uh, he wrote, he called in and had another sheriff go down to the, uh, this is before walking talkies. Uh, he went down to the airport. I sent a crew of laborers and the painter down there. And we laid red tarps on the top of the uh, angles till we found out which one it was. It was giving us trouble. And then they painted it green. So we never had that trouble again for four years. <laughs> So yeah. Kent, I have a question. Knowing Tucson, because I live there, did you ever have problems with the airplanes in any of the scenes? Because you have Davis Mountain Air Force Base, you have Tucson like you International. Have with the so, <laughs> cut, recut, cut, recut. Okay. Now, if we had trouble, we always try to get a clear audio as you can, but it's sometimes with the, you just can't. And so what we had to do is that bring the casket into loop lights. I think we know what that is. And uh, we would redo it. And then the sound effects editors would uh, lay into the track of horses or wagons or whatever to cover some of the sound. So it was always a give and take. It wasn't ever scheduled. So you just, you did the best you could. 